uh, yeah, so Marty's out in Michigan. Uh, we're doing our thing here. The Yankees, we got a busy – I mean, for a couple months, you know, we've been – you know, since the season ended, you know, we interviews here and there, you know, some rumors here and there. There's the DJ saga for forever. We got finally, like, real news. Like, this show is going to be packed with stuff to talk about. And we got news. This isn't – we shouldn't be leading off with this based off of the, you know, the – importance of the other things but I mean it literally happened as we're walking in the studio the Yankees just signed Darren O'Day to a one year two and a half million dollar uh deal I fucking love it and obviously it coincides with Anavita being traded which we're going to get into in a second everything went in there but I mean Darren O'Day is that guy when he comes in for the Orioles against the Yankees we just strike out every time he throws his yeah. slider his sidearm shit Judge Gary Stan they all just wave at it now he's on our side I'm his sidearm shit is cool. Like I, that is gonna be a lot of fun to watch in 2021. His baseball reference page is sneaky. Like, I was just looking at really it. Really so good, impressed. dude. Has, it's, you would never think. Hasn't had an ERA over four since 2012. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. <laughs> That's and for two million dollars, <laughs> give me that in a fucking second, dude. In a heartbeat. This guy, yeah. So it's two and a half million. Um. And there's a mutual option for 2022 as well. Um, he's 38 years old, but like I feel like the way he throws, it's like it, he's not—he doesn't have blow you away stuff. He's just crafty and like fucks with you because like the yeah. you know his arm delivery, his angle, he's, all that. He's kind of like Adovino. He's except yeah. he doesn't walk as many guys. Right, Hopefully. and yeah, way more consistent. Let's hope. Um, what are his walks? So last year, obviously, just you know in the 60 games or whatever, but he had a 1.1 ERA in nine in 16 and third. Um, 22 strikeouts to just five walks. I'll take that yeah. that ratio any day of the week. Um, and uh, yeah, he. I mean, he's just he's just a legitimately just a very rock solid pitcher um, who will help complement. I've been worried about Breen Green and Chapman. I'm oh, sorry, Breen Britain Green and Chapman. Um, and how like hey, like Canley's gone and now Alvino's gone. What what's going on here? Can't be relying on Sessa too much. So when O'Day comes into the mix and the two and a half million. Allows them, I think they had about eight to spend, nine to spend, somewhere around there. It allows them to kind of go get one more reliever, which is great. I've been yeah. saying you got to get two relievers. Um, and then I guess if they want to bring back Gardner for like two to three million, I guess. But that's not why we traded out of Montevino was to sign Brett Gardner. I want, I want that very clear. I don't fucking want Brett Gardner back because, you know, we, we're letting go another reliever. So I'm just done with I We have Talkman. I'm good with our fourth outfielder. People's like, bring that Brett. Brent Frazier did say so many nice things about Gardner, though, on that podcast. Let's not forget. But you know how it's going to – and he does have the versatility of playing center field, too. But, like – you just know how it's going to go, where, like, Clint's going to go down or something like that or get in a slump, and then Gardy's going to have his one-week hot streak, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. like, oh, well, Gardy, let's play Gardy for two more months. And it's like, no, just fucking stick with Clint. He's an all-star. So, um, yeah, so th- that's coming off hot right as we walk in here. Um, but I think, like you said, it's smart where it's like they, they could get two relievers for the price of one. Like, I'm bit, trade trade yeah. out of Eno, you get O'Day, who's maybe better than out of – I mean, maybe his ceiling isn't as high, but he's – I think he's better. Right there, yeah. Maybe more consistent, and then add someone else, too. So, Adovino, friend of the programs. Come on twice. Uh, sorry to see him go. Yeah, so we'll go right into Adovino now. Um, t- you know, I That guy was really good to us um, whenever we wanted him on. I think I also appreciate how honest he was anytime he talked to us. Like, you know, 2020 was such a big struggle for him. And, and you know, he talked to us right after the 2019 playoffs, which were really bad for him after his stellar 2019 season. He was one of the best relievers in baseball in the 2019 regular yeah. season when he first came over. Uh, but that postseason was a disaster. Um, but he was honest and, and about his struggles, and, and I always appreciate that. And he would come on. Um, and it does suck that he is a just massive Red Sox fan. I'm sorry, massive, massive Yankees fan. Like, literally yeah. grew up in New York. Um, there's pictures of Matt Games as a kid and how he's going to go play for the fucking Red Sox. Now, granted, it might not be for the whole year. They might end up trade. He seems like a guy that they would end up, you know, flipping at the deadline. Flip, yeah, like the perfect flip guy. But um, that has to, like, people always say, like, oh, it's baseball. He gets paid a million dollars. Fair, very fair. But he's legitimately, like, like, that was his dream to pitch for the Yankees. He was very, very excited yeah. when we brought that up to him. We interviewed him at a pool. Remember that? Our first yeah. Yeah, <laughs> the, yeah, yeah, yeah. With, we, like, kids, the kids playing in yeah, the pool. Yeah, yelling in the background on, like, lounge chairs with no other setup. It's insane. Uh, with, but With all that said, though, yeah. like, yeah, I like him. I mean, he was a great guy. I'm okay with trading him away for yeah, how yeah, much yeah. we're paying him. Yeah, no, <laughs> no question. Uh, the $8 million, um, was – for what now he could easily sw- you know like there were so many people who struggled in 2020 that you know 
could easily just flip the switch to 2021, you know, and you just like almost forget what happened last season. But there were the struggles in both postseasons with him. Um, he was really out of the circle of trust. He was always in the bottom of our bullpen trust trees in 2020, it felt like. Um, and for what you were paying him, it's better off doing this, letting the Red Sox take him. Hey, like a weird Yankees Red Sox trades are always just weird feelings, like, you know, bizarre. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> I, he, if it'll you probably gonna, be an answer to a trivia question one day. Yeah. But, like, hey, take her. Like, Cashman was literally looking at anybody to take this $8 million. Yeah. The Red Sox want to do it, and we sent along a prospect. I think it was Frank German is his name, or I don't know if it's pronounced the same way as Domingo's or Herman, whatever, but he's like a number 24 prospect, throws hard. Sure, take him. So they basically bought a prospect, I guess. I think it's like kind of going to be a win-win, both sides. We yeah. get the rid of the $8 million, allows us a little more flexibility in the offseason, and, yeah, the Red Sox get another reliever, sure, that won't help them too much because they're going to stink, um, and I guess they get this prospect out of it. But um, it allows us to – you know, play a little bit more in this offseason where before then they were pretty much stuck. If they didn't make yeah. this move, I don't know if they were going to get anything else. Um, and Which now, is, yeah. I will say, like, I get they want to get under the luxury tax, but the fact that we are in a world where the Yankees have to shed salary yeah, it's is a little bit ridiculous. But at least it's not like they shed it and then didn't do anything. Like, at least they yeah. shed it and then are using that extra money to go make, make extra moves. Yeah, for sure. And I think there's going to be more – with how cheap O'Day, I think, was, I'm expecting – there better be another reliever coming. One to two more moves, where I think it could be a reliever and Gardner coming back. Um, and who's the other reliever? I've had my eyes on Alex Colome for a little bit, coming from the White Sox. He's been really, really good for them over the last two seasons. Um, Rosenthal is a name that keeps coming up, Trevor Rosenthal. Um, he's mm-hmm. obviously got electric stuff um, and coming off a good 2020 as well. And then there's trade options. Amir Garrett on the Reds, he's cheap. Could go get him. You'd have to attach a prospect, I'm sure. But yeah. he'd be interesting, especially with the whole him and Dave thing. Although I think they squashed that beef a little bit. But it'd be cool to see. He's he's very, very good. Uh, and then, obviously, there's Josh Hader, who's just, you know, the Brewers keep dangling him. They say the offer, uh, the asking price is astronomical. Oh, not overwhelming if, is what the is what word we're hearing. But, yeah. If we're doing an astronomical asking price, I want it for a starter, not for Josh Hader. So here's the trade that I think his name is Randy Miller from NJ.com proposed for Hader today. I'm on board with this, um, and it, it might be a little crazy, and I have not eaten today, so my brain is a little crazy, but the proposal would be Debbie Garcia, Alexander Vizcaino, who's a uh, uh, future starter for this team, throws very hard, I think he's hit 100 miles an hour, um, Florial, who I couldn't be more done with, and Josh Smith, who's no. an infield prospect. No. You wouldn't do those four guys? No. Dev- we need starters. I want Devy as part of the rotation now in the future. Right I don't now, know who that Devy's other guy is, five. but you said he's going to be a future starter. Well, I mean, dude, I'm done with prospect hugging. You know what Josh Hader does to this bullpen? I, I'm No, I'm, I'm tired of the super bullpens. That was one of my takeaways. That's no, part of my going better. back to dinosaur we fucked baseball. We the super bullpen. No, we... The, I, I kind of agree with Tommy. I'm done with the, su- I'm done with the bullpen. We are... Starting pitcher has fucked us every time when we get deep in the playoffs. Every year. It's, oh, yeah, the starting rotation isn't that good, but if they could get three or four innings, we go to the Super Bowl pen. It just never fucking works. I'd rather just and have our a starter. super closer keeps blowing the lead, so I don't know what the hell else. Yeah, so let's do. get a new super closer is what I'm saying. I don't know, man. It's All, all I got to say is I'm, ha- I'm at least happy what we've done. It's not We're not just fucking being schmucks anymore. A month ago was but, bad. A month ago was bad. And now we're like, yeah. okay, we're back. Yeah!